हेलो माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज प्रवीण बंसल योर अकाउंट्स कोच टीचिंग क्लास ट्वेल्थ बुक टू चैप्टर नंबर फोर एनालिसिस ऑफ फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट सो फार वी हैव स्टडीड दैट वाइल्ड एनालाइजिंग आर फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट्स वी यूज फोर टूल्स फर्स्ट वन इज कंपेरेटिव सेकेंड इज कॉमन साइज थर्ड वन इज कैश फ्लो एंड फोर्थ इज रेशो एनालिसिस and we have covered comparative and common size things till the time ratio and cash flow statement would be your next chapters but in today's session we are going to cover a new analysis which is known as trend analysis while analyzing our financial statement trend of information is noticed and the movement is noted down whether the items are going up over the years or it is going down for an example if you are analyzing sales of 2011 then the sales of 2011 would be considered as base and then the sales of 2012 would be compared that whether it has gone up or down and in the same way sales of 2013 would be compared with the sales of 2011 and this is how trend is noticed and this is known as trend analysis this trend analysis is done for income statement and balance sheet as well let's understand this analysis by few examples on your screen you can see a data for balance sheet we have equity share capital we have general reserve 12% debentures bank overdraft bill payable sundry creditors and outstanding liabilities and we have to maintain a trend percentage sheet here we can see our first two items are equity share capital and general reserve both of these items are belonging to a common head which is shareholders fund the very first thing in the balance sheet on equity and liability side and then we have few liabilities some are long term and others are current liabilities so first of all we are supposed to classify these items like this in the shareholders fund we have equity and general reserve then we have long term debt or say long term borrowings or say non current liabilities that is debenture and the rest of the items are my current liabilities this is how we classify these items in the balance sheet we have learned the balance sheet format in our last session now let's start analyzing it if i take equity share capital for the first thing we have equity share capital as 1000 in 2010 and in 2011 it is again 1000 so the trend says equity is 1000 and in the next year it is again 1000 so there is no movement in the equity share capital when the year shifts from 2010 to 2011 but students you can see that we have 2012 and 2013 as well and in 2012 we have equity share capital as 1200 and as per the definition we are going to cover 2010 as the base year and rest of the year would be following that would be declaring themselves by considering 2010 as their base if i say 2010 is base and 2011 is the coming year so 2011 is 100% right and when i come to 2012 in comparison 1200 is 120% of 1000 isn't it then we have in 2013 1500 and it is 150% of 2010 so this is what the trend study is trend analysis is that sales were 1000 kept on the same figure that is 100% and 
then it increased to 120 percent, then it increased to 150 percent of 2010. Let us do it in a simple way. Here we considered 2010 as base, that is why the trend is 100. Now in 2011 it is 1000, but the trend is 100 because there is no change in the figure of equity share capital. In 2012, we have figure of equity share capital as 1200, which is 120 percent. So, this has been analyzed that sales has increased by 20 percent. That is why it has moved to 120 percent. Now, if I look at 2013, it is 1500. When I start comparing it with it 2010, it is 150 percent. This is trend analysis for equity share capital. Let us move to the second item given in the question and that is general reserve. General reserve it is 800, then it is 1000, then it is 1200, then it is 1500. Let us see. General reserve is 800, considered to be base, taking it as 100. Now, in 2011, it is 1000. In 2011, it is 1000, somewhere increased by 200 units or say 200 crores, 200 lakh any figure, it has increased by 200. That means an increment of 25 percent. In the previous sessions, we have understood how do we calculate the percentage. If you want to know about the change, the formula for change is change upon old value in 200, but we are not considering the change only. In trend, we are considering the whole value. That means in base or say denominator, the base value would be written and in the numerator, present value would be written and multiplied by 100. The base was 800. If I talk about general reserve and the current value is 1000 into 100. And if you divide them, you will get it 125 percent and this is what they have written. So, this is going to be the formula to calculate percentage while making trend analysis. Clear students? Let us move to next year. Next year we have 1200. In comparison, 1200 upon 800 in 200, it makes it 150 percent, right? Now, if we move to 2013, 800 comparative to 1500, it is a change of 187.5 percent and the formula is going to be the same present value upon base value in 200, right? So, this is how one head is completed, that is equity share plus general reserve combinedly shareholders fund and the totals would be entertained, but the trend is to be calculated again. 1800 is the common thing, that is why percentage is 100. Now, in 2010, it is 2000. So, in comparison, 2000 is an increased figure. 2000 upon 1800 into 100 will give you 111.11, right? Students, make sure while doing the total thing, while doing the trend analysis of total thing, do not total it vertically. You have to do it the way you were doing it earlier. 
let us make one more example for that. If I take the total of 2012 that is 2400 in comparison with 1800 then it gives me 133.33. Clear students? So, in the same way if I will go to 2013 1800 has jumped to 3000 and the percentage is 166.67 and this is how trend analysis is done for the totals right now let's move to our second head that is long term debt and you have just one figure for long term debt in your question that is 12 percent debentures rest of the things are my current liabilities right let's do that debentures are 400 then 500 then again 500 and 500 right so you can easily analyze there is an increment in the debentures for just one year then after it is constant right so let's see how do we do that 400 being the base year is considered as 100 percent now in the next year it has moved to 500 that means there is a hike of 25 percent so the percentage thing is 125 and as you saw that is 500 and 500 all the time so it would keep on carrying the same pace and the percentage and the figures would remain same clear as there is just one item that is not going to be any change in the totals for long term borrowings now let's move to the next head that is current liability we have bank overdraft the base is 300 considered as 100 percent now next year it is 400 so the comparison is 300 to 400 and the percentage change is 133.33 right by following the same formula current year upon base year into 100 right if I see 2012 300 has jumped to 550 so 300 upon 550 into 100 makes it 183.33 percent but now there is something to notice in the next year 550 has fallen to 500 but 550 is not to be compared with 500 300 is to be compared to 500 it gives you a percentage of 166.67 now this can be observed by any of the user of the accounting look the trend has shown a downward movement 183 has changed to 166 because 550 has fallen down to 500 this is negative trend of bank overdraft which is a positive sign that means we have paid our bank overdraft by how much percent the difference between 183 and 166 that is the downward movement in bank overdraft this is how investors management or any user makes their decision or analyze financial statements and that is what the whole sole purpose of analyzing financial statements right let's learn few more things under current liabilities bill payable given as 100 so the percentage is 100 in the next year bill payable is 120 so it could be the easiest calculation when the base is already 100 120 makes it 120 as percentage clear now in the next year we have it 80 the trend is going to be downward now 100 80 80 percent right but in the next year again we have some positive thing 80 has increased to 140 so comparison would be 140 isn't it so the trend is showing that bills payable have increased while moving from 2012 to 2013 
this is how we analyze that clear students and then the same treatment has been given to sundry creditors 300 is the base thing considered as 100 percent right in the next year 300 has increased to 400 so the trend has shown an upward movement 300 to 400 percentage change from 100 to 133 by following the same formula let me write it again for you current year upon base year into 100 right make sure you do not divide 2011 and 12 if you want to give a shot on 2012 the base year is going to be 2010 if you want to give a shot on 2013 the base year is going to be 2010 this is the only key to maintain the table let's see what has happened in the last year last year creditors have increased to 600 when it is compared to 300 it is completely twice so the percentage is 200 so what can you observe what can you analyze you can see that there is an upward movement 100 to 133 133 to 166 then 166 to 200 year by year sundry creditors are increasing that means companies purchasing more and more goods on credit right so such kind of analysis helps all the users to take decisions and at last in this balance sheet we have one more item that is outstanding expense 50 75 125 and 150 as you can see there is a hike year by year so same would be followed in the trend but while seeing the percentage it gives you a clear vision repeat it gives you a clear vision 100 to 150 to 250 to 300 with the increased pace the pace is increasing year by year the outstanding expenses are also increasing which shows that firm is facing cash crunches right because the outstanding expenses are increasing it might be a case that firm or say company is not able to pay the salary on time rent on time that's why year by year expenses are increasing and this is how analysis is done by following trend analysis we studied the trend analysis for equity and liability side let's start doing the same analysis for asset side here we have cash debtors stock other current assets land building and plant as you can see these three are my non-current assets and these four are my current assets i'll do the trend analysis for both the categories but before doing the analysis i would like to classify them into non-current assets and current assets firstly we have current assets and the very first item in the current assets is cash 100 is the base figure so the trend is 100 percentage is 100 when we go from 2011 to 2012 cash increases from 100 to 120 it makes it 120 then it falls it falls to 80 it is going to give you a negative trend when it is compared to the base year that is 2011 100 to 80 that means percentage is going to be at negative direction so the trend is 80 so this is going to be a year where company is facing cash crunches and if you can relate while doing the analysis trend analysis of liability side we were seeing that outstanding expenses were increasing and here cash is falling so this is how you can correlate right students then again 
if you see 2014, there is a hike of 40. The cash has increased to 140 from 80, but the comparison is to be made from the base year. So, it is 140, right? Let us move to the second item that is debtor, 200 being the base figure and then debtors increase from 200 to 250. The percentage is 125. Current year upon base year into 100. Let us do this to show you the calculation. Current year upon previous year into 100. What is current year? 250. What is your base year? 200 into 100, which makes it 2 and 125. This is how we are doing these calculations. I have shown these calculations to you 3-4 times while doing the analysis. I hope you got it completely. So, students, there is nothing going to be changed while doing the trend analysis. The base year is going to be the base for every year and percentages will be reflecting whether the trend is going upward or downward. If the percentage is going beyond 100, that means trend is facing an upward movement. If the percentage is going below 100, that means trend is facing a negative movement. And if a negative movement is for the liabilities, that is going to be a positive thing in general. And if fixed assets are going to be in right direction or say the positive direction, that is going to be a positive sign for company. And this is how we complete our trend analysis. So, in this chapter, we have done analysis of financial statements, comparative, common size, and now trend analysis. Rest of the analysis would be done in the next chapters in the next videos. So, that is it from my side for this chapter. So, you all are advised to practice these questions or similar kind of questions from your textbook. Thank you very much. Happy learning.